This is New Cab News with Lauren Pollan. Good evening and thanks for joining us. First off, Moses, wow, what a game. I was mm. one of <laughs> almost everyone from the station who was there, but it was, it was fantastic. You had everything if you wanted in a game. Uh, obviously, there was the couple of NHL games, and Gerard, you mentioned last night, there was no excitement for both yeah, games combined. You needed combined. to be annoyed. Like, you needed something, and, and certainly it had everything and then some. We'll have the highlights in sports, and trust me, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, because if you weren't there, you definitely missed out. Oh, yes, you did. And Gerard, it is uh, still pretty cold outside. Are we expecting more of the same? Are we yeah. going to warm up a little bit? Yeah, the more of the Arctic air is going to be coming on down. We're going to get, we'll be getting a little warm up. We've got a warmer uh -huh. front coming in, but after that, <laughs> The next few days is going to be quite a ways, but let's deal with what we got right about now. Cloudy conditions, there is snow in the forecast across the region, but what we got to tell you though is that even notwithstanding that, that warmer front has pushed us up to that high temperature we're seeing there. We got to minus two at one o'clock for Cold Lake and area, minus three at two and zero in the Battlefords as well in the middle of the afternoon there. They've cleared off nicely. There'll be an ebb and flow of cloud cover on the evenings, but there is some flurries in the forecast to take us into tomorrow. We'll chat about the details of all of that a little later on in the show. The RCMP is continuing its investigation into a Cold Lake Air Force employee after he allegedly distributed child pornography. The man is facing multiple charges including sexual assault and possession of child porn. Since the child victim is allegedly related to the suspect, police are not releasing any names. The RCMP at Cold Lake uh, received information from the RCMP at Swift Current, Saskatchewan, of a resident informing they had received uh, child pornographic images from a resident from Cold Lake. The accused is an employee of Four Wing Cold Lake. Four Wing officials say they are aware of the charges and will do anything they can to help. We take all allegations of sexual offenses by CF members very seriously. I would also like to say that at this time, the military police are cooperating fully with the RCMP investigation. The accused will be appearing in court in January 25th in Cold Lake. The RCMP is reaching out to the public after a rash of thefts at the service center. Police say various items were swiped from multiple locker rooms on January 2nd. If you have any information, you're urged to contact the Lloydminster RCMP or Crime Stoppers. The Alberta PCs have named Richard Starkey their candidate for the Vermilion Lloydminster riding. Nominations close today at 2 p.m. with Starkey the only one throwing his name in the ring. Last November, current MLA Lloyd Snellgrove announced he wouldn't be seeking re-election, leaving the seat up for grabs. Good news from a missing persons case we brought you yesterday. RCMP have found 13-year-old Haley Desjardins safe and sound. The police would like to thank the public for their help. Well, area residents have shown the border city is one tight-knit community in the second biannual Lloydminster Healthcare Auxiliary Quilt Raffle. After over six months of collecting tickets, organizers of the fundraiser drew the winning name for the raffle. Uh, <laughs> Elma Reeds of Marshall. Ooh, Does anybody know Elma? It all goes towards the care and comfort of patients at our hospital. The campaign met its goal of $4,400 raised. Bodner says she's pleased with this year's totals and that next year's goal will be even higher. Cooperatives and credit unions joined across Canada today for the launch of the United Nations International Year of Cooperatives. As Emmett Murphy reports, Lloydminster is a leader in the sector and area co-ops hope to follow suit. Across the country, there are 18 million co-op members controlling assets of over $330 billion. The launch of the International Year of the Co-op was a celebration of these numbers, but also an attempt to raise interest in these businesses. The biggest issue facing many is attracting and retaining youth. Director of Service Credit Union Doug Hastings says retention of youth is vital to growth. We're very fortunate to have uh, a young and free program where we have a youth ambassador and we have a we have a really growing youth uh, facet of our membership and so we're excited about that but we still are aware of the challenge. Hastings adds that attracting people in Lloyd Minster has never been a real issue. It's a sentiment that Mayor Jeff Mulligan echoes. 
Some of the people did talk about this phrase of best kept secret. Well, not so much in Lloydminster. I mean, I think people understand. But uh, in the region itself, people need to understand the value they can derive from a credit union and the kind of democratic control they can have in its future direction. We're probably the only community in Canada this size that actually supports two credit unions being service and synergy. So we have a lot of, of support in this area. In fact, Mulligan credits co-ops with Lloydminster's initial and continued success. Being where we are, our greatest strengths, our greatest weakness, 240K from the two bigger centers. Oftentimes we have to come together to find solutions, to find business environment that works, and uh, that's where the cooperatives, uh, that's their strength, right down the middle. Hastings says that while they are still finalizing details, the Service Credit Union will be planning activities throughout the year to celebrate the International Year of Cooperatives. Emmett Murphy, Newcap News. Coming up, a controversial treatment for MS patients comes to Saskatchewan with clinical trials fully funded.